Now, Hong Kong has been gripped by months of intense protests, pitting pro-democracy activists against uh, pro-Beijing lawmakers. Now, over the last uh, seven weeks, demonstrators have uh, planned rallies across the country in parks, along uh, main roads, uh, in the airport and outside government offices, calling for the withdrawal of the extradition bill. Well, this bill has now been uh, put on hold but demonstrators have been bringing up other wider political demands. Last Sunday, Hong Kong saw dozens of men, mostly in masks, storming a mass transit station in Hong Kong. Uh, to help us unpack what all of this unrest in Hong Kong means, I'm now joined by Professor Zilungisele Tembe, who's a senior researcher from the uh, Tabombeki African Leadership Institute. Uh, Prof, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Welcome to the program. Or should I say ni hao? Uh, ni hao, ni hao. <laughs> Thank you for having me. All right. So mm. um, we've seen these demonstrations for a number of weeks now. Uh, the last real unrest that I saw was 2003, and they were complaining about uh, the security bill at the time. 500,000 people on the streets. And uh, eventually, the Hong Kong government had to shelve that bill. Exactly. This was about an extradition bill. So um, I'm going to talk about those politics, but let's start with the violence that was quite disturbing that we saw on Sunday. Um, people in white vests, who exactly. are these people and wh why were they beating up people on trains? I, your case is as good as mine, mm. uh, Peter, oh, because what we're looking at here, we're looking at a, a perennial situation. Yeah. And remember, this is the month of July. July 1st, 1997, Hong Kong was handed over back to China to become part of China, which is part of China, mm. which was annexed by Britain in 1841. That is 156 years. So change is very, very, yeah. very painful. But what we are seeing now, all the protests, the beating of people, the quarrels and all that, mm. I think is part of change. We're experiencing the same mm. thing in South Africa as a young democracy. Where you have rights and you have closed spaces that are opening up, you are bound to get some sort of growing pains, mm. and that's what we're seeing. Uh, unfortunate in the manner in which it takes place, but it is part and parcel of China mm. as one country growing. So, uh, you know, the pro-democracy demonstrators say that they are largely peaceful. Uh, they sometimes feel the weight of uh, police activity. But for some reason, they say that these uh, hooligans, uh, these vandals, um, the police did very little to stop them. Why, why would that be? It, the, it, that approach, you, you've yeah. already mentioned two instances yeah. here which carry some sort of a fallacy. Yeah. First one is pro-democracy. Yeah. Pro-democracy from what? Mm. Because the 1984 agreement between uh, the United, uh, the Anglo-Sino agreement between the United Kingdom and China was giving back Hong Kong to China, which is by definition part of China. Right. But as a compromise, there is a 50 year gap Mm. which will end in 2047, which means that will be the transition part. So we have a mini constitution in Hong Kong, which yeah. serves as a basic law of Hong Kong. And but that, this is this uh, one country, two systems. One country, two systems. Mm. One country, two systems. Uh, uh, Hong Kong has got its mini constitution, which they are allowed to govern themselves. Now, there's an, there's, there are two conditions there. Yeah. One condition is the foreign policy of Hong Kong is directed through Beijing. That's number one. The defense of Hong Kong is directed through Beijing. So, schism or trouble yeah. that might yeah. happen there is that how do you determine a foreign policy without quelling mm. a situation of an uprising? Now, there are things sometimes of talking about freedom and people's rights. I consider Hong Kong to be part and parcel of China. So it means protests and the, the democracy uh, fans in Hong Kong, they are trying to tell you that the entire 1.4 yeah. Chinese population is under oppression. So, so we have to correct those premises. All right, so you saying, I mean, there's a, 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 a research done by the University of Hong Kong that said that 71% of uh, the people in Hong Kong 
are not proud to call themselves Chinese. They consider themselves Hong Kongers. So whilst it might be one country, they don't exactly. feel like they're part of that country. Exactly. And that's we have to take it from the context that the history of Hong Kong since uh, 1841, that is 156 years, it has been ruled as a city state with a British governor. Mm. And when that ended in, 19, in 1997, that is a growing pain going back mm. into the motherland, if we, if we were so to speak. Uh, if I were to give a circumstances, it's like all of a sudden we have Limpombo being given back to South Africa and Limpombo people will mm. say that we are not free. Not free right. from what? Because the constitution is a one country constitution. So what we see now are the growing pains. Now, let us get into mm. another very sensitive context yeah. here. It is the economic system. Hong Kong, it is said when you read in Wikipedia, read in Google, and even in its basic law, that it remains within its own legislation and yeah. within its own capitalist system. So what does that create? It means if you buy goods from Hong Kong, especially uh, from the border yeah. into Shenzhen, you have rights to duty free. Mm. So there's a lot of business going there, there's a lot of money to be lost, and there's a lot of money to be made. So Hong Kong has to decide if it is part of China yeah. and... Well, it doesn't have a choice, really. I mean, it is a given. It is part of China. It However, is part of China, exactly. So, so the challenge now is going to be this next um, mark, 2047, when the basic law of Hong Kong disappears. Yes, according it, to the uh, general uh, agreement. Yeah. So Hong Kongers are saying that they're feeling as if the special rights that they enjoy now are slowly dimish diminishing. Do you think this is Beijing preparing them for 2047? I don't think it's the making of Beijing. I think it is the natural growth of things because even the population that is in mainland China is interacting more with Hong Kong because Hong Kong is not longer a foreign land. Mm. So even Hong Kongese themselves, they are gaining benefits because they have a huge market to sell their goods. So the pain yeah. of changing from a city state to become simply a province, I think, I think this right. is where it was. Unfortunately, it. we're going to have to start wrapping, but uh, are we saying that we're going to see more and more of this kind of unrest uh, as we go closer and closer to 2047? P partly we can say that what can help to reduce these perennial demonstrations mm. is non-interference. Because we've seen people, as you've mentioned earlier, we say pro-democracy groups. Pro-democracy groups through whose democracy? Mm. Rights of Bills of South Africa, United Kingdom Constitution? Mm. No, Hong Kong is part of China. So the pro-democracy people are the way they are put, they are framing themselves, they are part and parcel of an old system. They just have to learn to go into the new system, All unfortunately. Right. Okay, Prof. I think we're going to have to pick this up again uh, in the near future, but uh, always a pleasure talking to you and uh, getting your insights about uh, this situation that uh, Hong Kong finds itself and uh, this landmark that uh, we're going to have to see how they traverse in 2047. But thanks so much indeed for your insights. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right.